Alaska is a place that has captured our hearts. We invite you to join us on a journey across this great land. We are chasing the vibrant colors of autumn, a mission that proves more challenging than we ever imagined. Why? You will see. In the meantime, come journey with us. From Valdez to Seward, a road trip through a route of unparalleled beauty. Prepare to be swept away by the raw, unfiltered soul of this land. To be inspired to one day journey this road yourself. Come, help us find the colors of fall, and prepare to fall in love with the wild heart of the last frontier. Our journey begins here in Keystone Canyon, a testament to the raw power of nature. Nestled near Valdez, this gorge stretches over three miles long, its sheer cliffs forming a dramatic gateway just wide enough for the Richardson Highway to snake its way through. Here, the dance of water and rock has sculpted a landscape of vertical slate walls and a breathtaking array of waterfalls cascading from above. The story of Keystone Canyon is as deep as its cliffs are high. It has witnessed the ambitions and rivalries of gold and copper miners, and the dreams of railroad builders aiming to conquer Alaska's wild interior. Here in the canyon, a historic gunfight took place over the railroad right away, and the tunnel in dispute was never finished. In the end, the railway was never built. As we leave the most narrow reaches of the canyon, we can now look up and see where all that cascading water is coming from. High up in the surrounding peaks, the winter snow melt feeds an array of streams that plunge down the mountainsides, carving and relentlessly shaping the land. The mesmerizing sights of Keystone Canyon have fully distracted us from the nerves of what comes next. We are currently 307 feet above sea level, and we are about to ascend to Thompson Pass, elevation 2,678 feet. The climb is long, unrelenting, and strikingly beautiful. Thompson Pass is a vital part of the Richardson Highway, connecting Valdez to the interior. It also happens to cut through one of the snowiest places on Earth, a region renowned for record-breaking snowfall, averaging 40 feet every season. In 1955, 10 feet of snow fell in 48 hours, setting a new world record. Until the 1950s, the road was considered impassable, and every winter Valdez was cut off from the rest of Alaska. Then, one winter, a single determined soul decided to prove it could be done, and single-handedly plowed the road, a feat that convinced the state it was possible. The road has remained open every winter since then, drastically impacting Valdez for the better, a testament to the power of human perseverance against the elements. We decide to sleep here for the night, picturing 40 feet of snow above our heads and only imagining the transformation of this place in the winter. We look out upon today's backyard, the mighty Chugach Mountains, and the story carved into its flanks. The Chugach Mountains stand as a formidable wall between the Pacific Ocean and interior Alaska. Here, moisture-laden storms from the Pacific collide with the range, unloading that record snowfall upon its slopes. 
Precipitation levels here are so extraordinary that they sculpt the mountain's face, giving rise to countless glaciers, creeks, and rivers, each one a testament to the sheer volume of snow that accumulates here. These waterways, fed by monumental snowmelt, tirelessly etch into the rock, shaping the landscape before us. We see, all around us, the powerful influence of nature's elements at work. And for those who really love to read the land, can you see it? Can you see where the glacier before us once flowed out onto this sweeping slope? Once you see it, it's as clear as the clouds in the sky. We take in the surroundings, the crisp mountain air of autumn, this area has not yet yielded any fall colors to us, but we have an idea where we might begin to find them when we continue our journey tomorrow. We set out, spirits high, ready for the road trip ahead. 27 Mile Glacier dominates our view, perched high on the mountainsides about 27 miles up the Richardson Highway, hence the name and quite an Alaskan way to mark distance. Now as we skirt by, it's as if the glacier is bidding us farewell and good luck on our quest to find the colors of autumn. Our route is leading through the Chugach Range, which curves like a sickle to our left. The sheer amount of glaciers snaking out of these mountains speaks to the volume of snow they receive, courtesy of those moist winds of the Pacific. We emerge on the other side and make our way into the heart of the Copper River Valley. We are driving through an ecoregion known as the Copper Plateau Taiga, a vast expanse where boreal forests meet the subarctic, creating a unique blend of flora and fauna adapted to its harsh, variable climate. This plateau, characterized by its copper-rich soil, provides critical habitat for species such as caribou, bears, and migratory birds. The taiga's dense spruce and fir trees are interspersed with wetlands and rivers, making it a vital water source and ecological corridor for wildlife. Once upon a time, this entire region was beneath the waters of an ancient lake called Lake Atna. Formed 58,000 years ago, Lake Atna was an estimated half the size of Lake Ontario, profoundly influencing the landscape and leaving behind remnants like Taslina Lake. A relic of the ancient Lake Atna, Taslina stretches over 21 miles from the Copper River Valley into the Chugach Range. It is now fed by Taslina Glacier, who lurks far in the distance. Taslina Glacier is another testament to the immense snowfall received by the Chugach Mountains. It stretches 25 miles long, flowing from deep within the range north to its terminus near Taslina Lake. The autumn colors have just started to kiss this region, even with it so dominated by black spruce. We will need to find more deciduous forests, and so we continue on. Though taking our sweet time, reveling in the majesty unfolding to our left.
It's Alaska in September, so we still have plenty of daylight left. This area receives 14 hours of sunlight at this time of year. Plenty of time to sniff out some fall colors. We drive headlong into Matanuska Valley, a drive near and dear to our hearts. Before long, it begins to happen. Patches of vibrant color dot the route, and we stop to see what we can see. We know more must be ahead, and we have a feeling that it will be on the flanks of an old friend that the show will really begin to start. And sure enough, it does. We have introduced you to this friend before, but never when they were surrounded by the burgeoning colors of autumn. Would you like to take a moment to fly over one of the wonders of the natural world? It's difficult to put into words the sheer grandeur of a glacier like Matanuska. Sometimes we just need to let the glacier show us. For those of you just joining us on the Art We There Yet journey, this is Matanuska Glacier, one of the gems of South Central Alaska. The colors are just beginning to blaze along its lower flanks, as well as among the branches of the braided river that it feeds. We can see the shift from deciduous trees along the riverbanks to the coniferous forests that climb the mountainsides until even they cannot withstand the conditions and alpine tundra takes over. As we continue west, descending deeper into Matanuska Valley, we begin to understand something important. We just witnessed colors along the glacier, but now here, just a few miles south, the land is still blanketed in lush green. We are beginning to see that in Alaska, the autumn colors do not sweep across the state in one decisive brush stroke. They show up in patches, in pockets, at different times, even within the same region. The colors along Matanuska were beautiful, no doubt, but we are on a mission for something heart-stopping, for a landscape set afire. It will require not only location, but timing. In short, we are learning that we will have to get ourselves to the right place at the right time. As we cross the Kinnick, we inch ourselves closer to Anchorage, who will be our destination and home for the night. Anchorage is our place to resupply, rest, and take stock before continuing onwards. We will need that for the push tomorrow and the epic landscapes we are about to pass through. Have you ever heard that old saying that in Alaska, small planes are like pickup trucks? We've said it before, we'll probably say it again. But here at Lake Hood in Anchorage, the constant coming and goings of small aircraft make this fact abundantly clear. 
Set to the backdrop of the Chugach Mountains, there's nothing quite like coming here on a clear autumn day and watching the show. We're on our way again, back in our old stomping grounds with the Turn Again Arm. We love it here, and there are a lot of good reasons why. This is our route. Having made it to Anchorage, we are now driving headlong towards the Kenai Peninsula, where we will snake our way through the mountains en route to Seward. Will we find the colors there? This is the Seward Highway. It stretches 125 miles from Anchorage to Seward, and it is without a doubt one of America's most scenic roadways. Just about every inch of this highway is spectacular, and the Turnagain Arm is quite an entrance. The Turnagain Arm forms the boundary between the Kenai Peninsula and mainland Alaska, and quite a dramatic boundary it is, resembling a giant tear in the fabric of the state. The Seward Highway snakes through alongside the historic Alaska Railroad. Who knows, if the tides of time had been different, perhaps this railroad never would have been built here. After that historic gunfight halted all development of the railroad in Valdez, Seward became the primary railway port of the early 1900s. Seward, not Valdez, became the seed from which the Alaska Railroad grew and expanded across the territory. It's interesting, is it not, how one single event can create profound ripples throughout time. This remarkable waterway is not only famous for boasting the highest tides in the United States, but also for a unique natural spectacle known as a boar tide, a tidal wave that travels up the arm so large it can be surfed. The waters of the arm are an important feeding ground for endangered Cook Inlet beluga whales, who can be seen here especially during salmon season. And the shores along Turnagain Arm are rich with history, hosting some of the earliest archaeological finds of human settlement in Alaska. If you have been with us for a while, you know that we dove deep into all of these fascinating facets of the Turnagain Arm. And if you're curious, we highly recommend that you experience Episode 9. The Upper Turnagain Arm is marked by wetlands that play an important role as habitat for many migrating bird species. Just as the highway and the railroad must find their way through the maze of mountains dominating South Central Alaska, so too do migrating birds as they make their way to the vast tundras of the north. Wetland and estuary environments such as these play a crucial role in their journey. We notice that while some trees along the arm have not yet turned, Others are beginning to show color, while some are already bare. The Turnagain Arm is well known for its high winds, and this must play a part. This only highlights the patchwork nature of autumn colors and how tricky it can be to get your timing just right. For those little patches that we do find, we take time to soak them up and enjoy the bright sunshine of this beautiful day. Colors or no colors, the sights along this drive are quite a thing to take in. Right where the Turnagain Arm meets the mountains, we say hello to the Kenai Peninsula. 
And this is where we find another little taste of autumn. Welcome to the place we have called home for nearly a year now. What keeps calling us back here really requires no explanation. Close your eyes, get out of your skin. All oh, it is matters, let it in. If I could, I would be right here with you. The Kenai Peninsula is celebrated for its majestic mountains, expansive wilderness, and pristine rivers brimming with trout, dolly varden, and salmon during the season. It spans over 25,000 square miles and features the impressive Kenai Mountains, home to the Harding Ice Field and the many glaciers that it feeds. The name Kenai is derived from the native Athabascan people who resided along the Kenai River. The history of this place runs deep. The Seward Highway weaves and works with the landscape. The Alaska Railroad comes and goes as it chooses, sometimes accompanying the road and sometimes not. It is currently on the other side of the mountains to our left. We can't help feeling like with each mile, we are inching our way closer to home. Deep in the heart of the peninsula sits Turn Lake. Shallow and marshy, it is another haven for migratory birds on their way through the range. Mew gulls, arctic terns, and trumpeter swans nest and feed here in May and June. When many of the nesting birds depart, the salmon arrive in force, all the way up from the Gulf of Alaska. The lake is home to muskrat and beaver, the occasional moose wades through, and every now and then black bears can be spotted foraging for berries in the surrounding meadows. Even dull sheep can be spotted on the slopes above. Once upon a time, this was the final stop of the Alaska Railroad. Prospectors heading to the gold strikes of the interior disembarked here and began a long journey by pack trail hundreds of miles north. The advent of winter brings a magical transformation to Turn Lake. As temperatures drop, the surface freezes over as clear as glass, turning it into what locals fondly call wild ice. It must be quite a sight to behold and to skate on. It is here at Turn Lake that the road branches. One road heads towards Homer and the Kenai lowland side of the peninsula. The other heads onward into the range towards Seward. We are delighted to be seeing more and more color and we just wonder if we'll catch even more on our next stop, which just so happens to be one of our favorite places to park on the peninsula. Unfortunately, we strike out at Upper Trail Lake for now. But 
did we really strike out? With scenery like this, I don't know if that's the right phrase to use. The snow dusting the mountaintops is new. It is a sign that winter is just around the bend. But where are the colors? When they do arrive, they will be a bright, vivid flash in the pan. Some years, they never quite come at all. Where the clear waters of a mountain stream flow into Upper Trail Lake, we see the stark difference in sedimentation between the two bodies of water. The creek must be fed by snowmelt or spring, maybe both. And the waters of Upper Trail Lake are obviously glacially fed, positively laden with the fine rock flour that glaciers mill from the rocks they pulverize along the way. We consider camping here for the night, and we will be back at some point when we will show you this amazing spot. But we do know of one other spot that is calling us to drive just a little bit farther. The road there is a little bumpy. Word to the wise for those who visit Alaska in the summer, which is most, prepare for road construction. Lots of it. The deep winters, freeze-thaw cycles, and in many parts of the state, melting permafrost lead to roads that need a lot of TLC. This stretch of the Seward Highway along Kenai Lake is getting a much needed facelift. In no time, we reach the place we will call home tonight, a pull-off just past mile 12. The Kenai Peninsula is home to three unique ecoregions. The Pacific Coastal Ice Fields and Tundra, the Northern Pacific Alaskan Coastal Forests, and the Cook Inlet Taiga. Together, these regions underline the importance of the Kenai Peninsula in supporting a wide range of biodiversity and natural processes. Up here in the mountains, we are in the ice fields and tundra ecoregion, and we witness the clear transition between vegetation zones. Tundra and ice dominate the highest reaches of the peaks. Then hardy shrubs take over. After that, subalpine forests of spruce and hemlock climb as high as they can. And finally, alder and cottonwoods enjoy the warmer valley floors. We will get to catch a glimpse of the coastal forest ecoregion when we make it to Seward tomorrow. Today's the day, the sun is shining, and Seward awaits. It feels so good to be rolling into Seward once more. This has been our home of homes here in Alaska. We spent last winter tucked away in a cabin on a snow-covered hillside just outside of town. We were back in July for Independence Day, and now we're back again once more. Even now, the tourist season is happening with cruise ships in port. The ships are here because this is where the Alaska Railroad ends, or more accurately, where it begins. Remember those tides of fate that led Seward to be the primary port where the maritime world would link to the interior through the burgeoning Alaska Railroad? Well, here we are. Here cruise passengers disembark their ships and board the Alaska Railroad and ride that historic railway into the interior. If the history of the Alaska Railroad interests you, we think you really might enjoy episode 14. Now we would like to take you to a part of town where we can witness up close and personal that coastal rainforest ecoregion we spoke of before. This is the road to Miller's Landing and Lowell Point. 
the area is highly prone to rockfall and landslides. In fact, in May 2022, a massive landslide occurred here. Luckily, no one was hurt. Needless to say, when you drive this road, you don't stop. You wait till you get to the other side to enjoy the incredible scenery out here. Now that we are at the sea, we are within the Northern Pacific Alaskan Coastal Forest ecoregion. This ecoregion stretches from here to Kodiak Island and all the way down to Ketchikan. It is a mecca of biodiversity, its forests dominated by Sitka spruce and hemlock, which in turn are home to a wealth of fauna. The climate is mild due to its proximity to the ocean and the Alaska current leads to high precipitation rates. Most impressively, this ecoregion encompasses the largest area of old-growth temperate rainforest in the world, making it one of North America's wildest and best-protected regions. And yes, you heard that right. Here on the shores of the Kenai Peninsula, we are in the rainforest. Well, now that we're here, we need a place to park our old beast, and we know just the spot. We are about to show you one of our favorite wild camping spots in Alaska. Welcome to the Exit Glacier Special Use Area. This is the outwash plain and braided river of Exit Glacier, which means Mama Glacier cannot be that far behind. We came here hoping that the cottonwoods blanketing this glacial valley would give us the colorful show we seek. But what we're seeing now doesn't look promising. Half the leaves haven't yet turned and half are already gone fallen before they had a chance to turn. And that's how it is some years. Will the remaining leaves turn and give us a show? In the meantime, we are surrounded by the towering Kenai Mountains who look as if they are expecting a bit of rain tonight. We are in the rainforest after all. This is wild camping at its finest. We are kind of experts at finding epic wild camping spots and we've racked up a fair few here in Alaska. We share each one in a guide that we made for wild camping in Alaska. We hope you enjoy. It turns out that the rain the mountains were expecting fell as snow. We feel so lucky to have witnessed that first snowfall upon these peaks that we love so much. From this point forward, that snow will continue to creep farther and farther down until the land is completely blanketed in pure white. Yet the colors are still not here. But we have a sneaking feeling that if we wait just a few days, they will show up right at the place we are hoping that they will. What is that place we want to take you? Will the colors happen there like we hope? And what will we do while we wait, given that it's September in Seward, winter is coming, and we have a freezer to stock? Well, place your bets, and we'll see you next time on Aren't We There Yet? Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art We There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.